they do a great job, and they, they do it for little or nothing in return, and we certainly appreciate it. Thank um, you. Listen, folks, let me tell you a little bit about myself briefly, and then um, tell you why I want to be the next state chair of the Democratic Party for the state of New Mexico. Um, I was actually born, I'm 47 years old, but I was born many years ago in Washington, D.C., of all places. Hubert Humphrey introduced <laughs> my mom and dad. <laughs> so I think from birth I have been a Democrat. <laughs> um, when I was uh, a little bit, of, when I was 17 years old, I went. I came out to New Mexico. I had this dream of being a major league baseball player. That that never happened. But I came out here to play baseball for the University of New Mexico. And when I was 18 years old, I was already washed up, if you will. But I was. I was. My brother and I were living on on the other side of the Sandias, in a rural area of Sandoval County at that time. And um, we had about 60 families up there, and all, most, most every one of them was a Democrat. And of course, I was a registered Democrat already. But the precinct we voted in was literally an hour away. You had to drive all the way over the mountain into, into Bernalillo to go vote. So we had this road. It was a dirt road, and it was about five miles long uh, in Sandoval County, maybe even a little bit a little longer than that. And it was always rutted up, and it was never, you could barely travel through it. Well, um, I got this idea that maybe we ought to form we ought to be able to vote up here because that would give us political power to go down and say, fix our road. It was such a simple thing, but fix our road. So at the time, Sally Padilla, who, by the way, is finishing her last term of county clerk in Sandoval County now to this day, was the county clerk. And she went and said, of course we'll set up a precinct up there. You've got enough families. Of course, Ruben Mira, who was the county chair of the Democratic Party, when I decided I was going to be organized as precinct, wasn't exactly thrilled with this young kid coming in and saying, I'm going to be the next precinct chair. But nonetheless, we got it done, and the, the, the day after we formed our precinct, and, and I was elected the county chair, oh, I'm sorry, the county precinct chairman in that precinct, I, went, I was instructed by my voters in that precinct to go down to the county commission and give them an earful about how we need to get the road fixed. So I went down there, and I went stood up in front of them, 18 years old, shaking and everything else, and I said, county commission, if you don't fix this road, and especially you, commissioner, our representative, we're going to vote you out of office. <laughs> and I turned around and sat back down, and it was quiet in the room. And then I went, I went, I went back up, and, and one other guy would be down. And he said, you did a great job. We'll see what happens. The next day, they were grading the road. <laughs> and I realized something then, that the government, that getting involved can make a difference in everyday people's lives. And I never forgot that. I later was a war chair in this county. I was the vice chair of the state party in 2004. I raised a lot of money for this party in 2004. We had to put on the first caucus, now regardless of what you think of the caucus. We had to put on the first caucus. That was our mandate. I raised a lot of money to help fund that, and I'm proud of that. Um, since then, 1995 to 1999, I was an Albuquerque City Councilor representing a very Republican district. But I, but I, but I want to tell you about two accomplishments that I can pride myself on. I think each and every one of you can, can relate to. You know, as a city councilor, you get to build parks, and you get to do fire stations, you get to build new fire stations, and you get to help your community that way. But these two things, I think, tell more about what I'm all about than any park that was built while I was city councilor, or any fire station, or anything else. I was also, at the time, a prosecutor. I was prosecuting for the state at the time, and at the same time I was an elected city councilor. And one of the things I learned as prosecuting was an awful thing that was happening. Victims of sexual assault were going to an emergency room and waiting hours before they could be seen because there was a heart attack coming in and the doctor had to take care of that. There was a stroke victim. There was a broken arm that needed to be set. So a sexual assault victim would be sitting in the emergency room, really being traumatized the second time, having to relive what just happened, and sit there and wait and wait. And literally, there was one story where someone waited. So there was this, there's a little pilot program in another state, and some folks came to me and said, why don't we do it? And um, we passed a resolution and funded it in the city at that time that was the Sexual Assault Nursing Examiners Program. Some, some, somebody may not have heard of that. But it is it funds specifically trained nurses that are headquartered out of the women's hospital that as soon as a, a, a rape victim shows up at a hospital, they are immediately dispatched to take care of that person. They are 24-hour on call. 
They work together with the Rape Crisis Center. And because of it, people are not traumatized a second time. And also, they catch the per perpetrators more often because they're able to gather the evidence. Uh, I pride myself on that because they gave me an award two years ago calling me the founding father of that program. But that, every single day to this day, helps people that are victimized. The second piece of legislation I want to tell you about that tells a little bit about myself um, is I, I was able to, I received the Human Rights Award for the city of Albuquerque. The reason I received that was because I was, I sponsored a bill and it was the first hate crimes legislation ever passed in the state of New Mexico. Now we have a state law, but we, we knew that people that have committed crimes that were based on hate, that was just something that we could not accept. And we passed that and then shortly thereafter the state followed suit and uh, it makes a difference and I know it does. Because I truly believe in human rights and civil rights and I have my entire life. Um, I, as, as many of you know, um, I'm an attorney. I've been a prosecuting attorney, and today I have a litigation practice. In fact, the last two days I've been in trial. I'll tell you the trial I'm on, but there's nobody here that sits on the jury, right? It's in the, it's in the jury right now, okay. Um, I wanted to say that because I see the judge back there. I want to make sure I didn't get in trouble. Um, but, but right now I'm standing up for someone who in 1970, a black man was convicted of three uh, different crimes and was sentenced to the state penitentiary in 1971. He didn't get out until 2004. I am currently in a litigation against uh, basically the state of New Mexico because they kept him in too long. They kept him in years too long. And no matter what, I stand up for people, I believe, that need help. I also stand up for victims, victims of whether or not it's a defective product or whether or not it is a, an accident, medical malpractice, or yes, people that have been charged with crime. I want to say something right now because I think this needs saying. I, I never thought that when I decided to run for state chair there'd be a website saying stopsam.com. Wow. That's, I'm, I'm kind of flattered by it. They, they must feel like I'm going to win or something. But, but, but besides that, what's, what's really crazy to me is that they're attacking me from doing a job that, that I love to do, number one, but more importantly, that we should, we should never attack, and that is being a lawyer for standing up for people's constitutional rights, for standing up for the most accused, the people that, that the whole media, the whole world, the whole government's coming down and saying, look how awful they are. Well, I'm the one person that stands up in court for them. I'm the one person that says, you know what, if the government violated their constitutional rights, there's something wrong with it, and we can't let that happen because of their rights are violated. Whose rights are next? It's every one of ours. Um, so I pride myself, and I will never ever run from the fact that I stand up for people. And for them to attack me is, is, a, is a page right out of the Republican playbook. It is a, and we as Democrats should be united. We can have our races within the party, but to attack another Democrat because I'm a lawyer is, is really ridiculous, quite frankly. That's, a, that's in the Constitution. Everybody's entitled to, to be a lawyer. But with that said, <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's something that